Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Good afternoon. We are very glad to see you uh, here at our little discussion about literary translation in Ukraine and about how we can uh, learn uh, live with it uh, if you have this talent and if you can actually make your living with it. So we are literary translators and we specialized first of all in uh, science fiction, but also we have translated uh, more realistic works and Katerina also translates poetry, this kind of a contrast. Uh, so during our presentation we will try to cover the aspects which we did and uh, the challenges which we met as literary translations apart from the financial part and how we can overcome those challenges. Uh, sorry, this is another presentation. No, no, this is not ours. Okay, maybe you can start telling. Yeah, so uh, in the beginning, I would like to tell uh, whom our presentation can be interested to you. Uh, we are young translators, so probably our ideas would be interesting to young translators, graduates and students, freelance translators, and our more experienced colleagues who would like to do literary translations and are used to, to uh, doing some technical text. Uh, if you are tired, uh, after translating very technical text about maybe refrigerators or something. Uh, sorry, we've got a technical problem here. So you will have an opportunity to try yourself on something else if you would like to do something really special. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, um, for our uh, next um, uh, speech, we and need our presentation. So let's try to think. A trans literary translator, who uh, do you think of? Uh, dear uh, audience, please uh, help us. Shitova, Noregal, good. Marshak, Pasternak, okay. So, Tchaikovsky, Pasternak, Marshak, Noregal, Lukash, Rilski. Okay, maybe any other ideas? <laughs> oh, we need to spend some more time, sorry. Okay, and now let's think. What is similar for all those people? Noragal, for example, Lugash culture. What are similar things for them all, apart from the epoch? Their talent, right. Their seriousness, yes. They are monumental, right? Yeah, they are monumental, right? This is uh, a mandatory uh, thing. You imagine a very serious person. Also, gray-haired. All people we have mentioned, they are all, let's put it this way, uh, they are not so young. And they were not so young when they became famous. And uh, unfortunately, they are dead. This is the same thing for them all. So they look uh, like this guy, this handsome dinosaur. And unfortunately, uh, currently there are no more dinosaurs. Everybody's fond of them, but nobody has actually seen them, right? Uh, we are alive, and this is a great advantage for us, right? Of course, there are such dinosaurs even now. Though, we can say that the portrait of a modern literary translator has changed greatly. Uh, we have uh, uh, selected four of our colleagues and we can say that they all now are sitting in their homes and are translating some novels, which will be presented at the Editors Forum in Lviv, Sergei Krikon. 
uh, a young a translator who translates horror books. He worked with uh, uh, the books of Stephen King and also his uh, uh, great uh, uh, in um, a great artist uh, actually the t-shirt uh, was designed by him Anastasia Rogoza she's a young translator she translated Stephen King Thomas Garris and she specializes in uh, science fiction as well uh, Mikola, sorry, Volodymyr Chernyshenko. He's a translator and he's a popularizer of Radio Kepling in Ukraine and Bogdan Stasiuk. He is now working in translating uh, Dan Simmons' Hebrewion. Uh, he posts uh, on Facebook about this book. Uh, soon we will see it. So we, there is a question, why did all these people decide to do literary translation and do we need literary translation today? This conference actually proves the fact that uh, today there are really many people who know foreign languages and it's not a problem to take an original book and just to read it and uh, know straight away uh, what author wanted to say so actually uh, it seems that there is no need in literary translation but it just seems because in fact there is always a need in literary translation because only through translation you can implement the book into the cultural area and realm of your own country only a translated book may become uh, an object of your own culture so translation engages uh, the uh, culture into the world literary process and uh, it uh, leads to creation of some new works let's take Stephen King he is a famous famous writer uh, since 1990s probably in our region there were some publications even in the Soviet Union but uh, in Ukrainian culture realm he appeared just recently only since 2006 when uh, the family uh, book club started uh, printing Stephen King books in Ukrainian the Ukrainian culture had a certain response. He started uh, appearing uh, in uh, the books of uh, modern uh, Ukrainian uh, trans uh, writers. Volodymyr Puzi has allusions uh, to Stephen King. Max Kedruk also is uh, uh, using some concepts and uh, direct allusions to Stephen King. But, for example, the novel A Cat Country by Chinese writer Lao Xi is absent in uh, the Ukrainian real. Why? Because there is no translation. There is Russian translation, there is translation into English, and there is uh, Chinese original. But in Ukraine, people don't know it. So in this case, we can say um, not we're not talking about readers if they are reading the book but about the availability of the translation uh, after uh, Stephen King books uh, appeared in Ukrainian and uh, now uh, there is uh, a fan club in the internet and uh, it, they can influence the activities of uh, the editorial houses so uh, let's hope that we don't have this question if we need a literary translator so now now we have a question how because uh, a translation of um uh, fiction uh, is an area where uh, regular principles of translation do not work. First of all, you need uh, to know uh, the source language. But first of all, for literary translations, you need to know not only the source text, but also the target text well. It is important how uh, you know your own language and uh, how you can bring information to your reader what you need to do, do it you need to use uh, dictionaries of uh, synonyms uh, 
um, and her name's I worked uh, in trans translating a French detective and the hero uh, wanted to come back to the Paris of the 17th century and he was using the words typical for the uh, 17th century because the author was interested in this topic and we had to uh, dive deep into the dictionaries of uh, Ukrainian language of the same time uh, to really depict uh, the concepts of the author because if the main goal of uh, translation or interpretation is communication when we're talking about literary translations uh, it doesn't work because just standard uh, text is uh, does not have this emotional effect which we really need when we are talking about uh, a literary translation. We can uh, remember the philosopher Andrei Machinik. He is uh, uh, more famous uh, uh, in uh, France, but he had an important concept. Uh, what nuance is important in uh, literature? What it actually does? What is the effect on readers? And how the style and the language uh, is uh, reflected in uh, the perception of your reader. So what do you need? You need to get acquainted with uh, translation canon because uh, this uh, question is rather distributable, of course, but we can try to offer our little list, which is a must uh, in our opinion. But maybe you uh, will argue with us and you need to read a lot, of course, uh, because uh, literally translator is a reader, because after you read a lot, you can uh, start translating books. Why? We will tell you a bit later what is the role of uh, this aspect. And um, actually, there is a single no, what you sh don't, shouldn't do. No machine translation. And we're talking not about Google Translate, this is really simple, but uh, the wonderful section technologies and localization, which just doesn't work. Cat tools and trotters won't help you because there are no terms and one of the same word may have different connotations. There are word games uh, and um, you know about them. Uh, so we shouldn't really uh, dip into this. I think you, you understand it. Uh, so if you decide to translate books, you should remember about those things. And so it would be interesting to know what you should read and which layers you should study in order to become a great literary translator. Uh, so the canon we were talking about. The term canon is uh, a really subjective notion because it's our subjective opinion and we consider several authors very useful for a future translator of literature. At first you should analyze works and translations by Kochur, Lukas, Boristen and Anatoly Perepadam. They are worth reading even if you don't like their translations. No one likes the Cameron, maybe not everyone, but you have to read the translation by Lukas because his translation is really unique. Containing the theoretical base, we would recommend uh, several theoretical works by Maxim Rilski, Problems of Ukrainian Literary Translations, works by Nora Gal, Words Dead and Alive, works by Grigory Kochur, his theoretical articles about translation edus. Uh, they were issued in a two-band edition and an interesting work by Maxim Strich, a Ukrainian literary translation between literature and nation creation. The author tells why we need literary translations and the thesis is voiced that the development of literary translation conditions the development of national literature because translators are somehow the pushers who push new ideas, new terms into the culture, new outlooks, and these new ideas progressive ideas are taken by writers, by culturologists of the country itself. And concerning Kocher and Lukas, uh, here is 
there are two approaches to literary translation. One of them is like word for word uh, to the adaptation to culture, and another one is for preservation of a barrier between the foreign and native culture through the prism of the foreign culture, because Lukas was for a pragmatic adaptation of everything, even if the work is translated is written in Galician dialect, it should be translated into Galician dialect as well. And uh, we would like to make a small example, a small poetic minute. Uh, the most famous um, verse by Paul Verlaine, uh, A Signa Pisnia, or Autumn Song, and how they did it with a small line. At first, the original. It is in French. Uh, so what do we hear? We hear the assonance, the play of nasal sounds, of vowel sounds, and how is it reflected by our literary translators. Uh, Kocher, he wanted to um, convey this idea of nasal sounds. He wanted to recreate these assonances but it's a really problematic in Ukrainian because uh, the musical instrument is not monotonous. It's not flexible. What the translator did, uh, he, uh, he used the word strings, struny, Ukrainian one. That's what translator did, Kochur. And Lukas had another approach because in Ukrainian, uh, this musical instrument. So it's a Ukrainian verse. His translation is really far away uh, from the um, melody, from the tone of the French original and from the image of the author himself, Paul Verlaine. And emotionally, it was maybe closer to a um, mild female creation, maybe. And Lukas uh, gives a male, male character to this verse. And it demonstrates a difference in approaches. Of course, they remain in opposition one to another, but they complement each other greatly. And the question, why shouldn't you be afraid of old books, old publications? The first um, translation into Ukrainian of the comedy by William Shakespeare, The Taming of the Shrew, was published in 1881 in the translation by Pantelemon Kulish, who translated it as Priborka Nagostruha or Tamed Wit uh, in English. And you don't know in which stylistic aspect you can use this. Ukrainian word gastruha. Uh, the, um, here, this word gastruha, Ukrainian one, uh, is really authentic, and you are unlikely to find it in modern dictionaries. So, actually, the blood we were promising. We told you there will be blood. So the young translator will tell you, OK, I analyzed all theoretical words. I'm acquainted with the canon. And here is the problem. His Majesty Postmodernism, almost all literary translators who work with modern works, uh, we think that postmodernism is a creation of modernity, but the translators of fantasy who translated Hamlet and monologues by Erasm Rotterdamsky, they didn't know the word postmodernism, but they were translating postmodernistic works. Why is this postmodernism so problematic? Which symptoms? It has allusions, citations, covered citations, because author does not indicate, okay, here the citation is you should discover it for yourself and reminiscences of course the problem is uh, here all these symptoms are realized one at a time all together so we have selected three examples 
of such translation problems, the labyrinth of allusions, when we have several allusions, two, three, or more in one sentence. For instance, a novel by Roger Zelazny starts from the line. Uh, recall what happened to John Donne. He stopped considering himself an island. Uh, the reader um, is likely to miss the first sentence of the novel, the beginning. But here, two allusions are deciphered. The first one is direct to John Donne and his famous work, No Man is an Island. And the other one uh, addresses us to Hemingway and his For Whom the Bell Tolls, because his epigraph is a citation from John Donne. Don't ask for whom the bell tolls, it's for you. Uh, is it problematic uh, to analyze the novel, to read the novel without realizing that this is an illusion? But the understanding and identification of illusions, it gives an additional charm to, to the readers. It helps you to have a different outlook to this story. It's not just a novel about uh, about uh, challenges, about fantasy, so you should read it a little bit. Uh, quite often, especially now, authors like Intermedial Illusions, again addressing Stephen King and his heritage, a person in love with music, with cinema. Uh, he bought two radio stations in his own town, so we know clearly uh, that uh, the person of the novel likes the music which pops of the state uh, he visits. For instance, in the novel, which we already um, mentioned, the illusion does not mark with the red marker, for instance, watch out, the illusion is here. No, illusions just come up because we don't know uh, about the author's intentions. For instance, the novel Pet Cemetery, a typical primitive situation. A man is going to work and a wife is preparing breakfast for him, so he is going to work. And a person says, rock and roll, it's high time for a rock and roll animal to put the boogie shoes on and go to work. Here we have two allusions. The first one uh, is to Lurid's album, Rock and Roll Animal, and the other one to the song of Key C and Sunshine Band called Boogie Shoes. Again, the author does not emphasize our attention on that. He just cited and wrote further. All these citations are just like breathing and the third type of illusions, really specific. When the author got lost in his citations, uh, we came up with such illusions as well. For instance, in the novel Talisman by Stephen King, there is a moment when King cites uh, the verse, and in the text uh, he is concerned that he is citing Robert Burns, but actually uh, he cites Thomas Spence Eliot, who cites the medieval uh, thinker, Juliana Norwitzka. But in the text, it follows up, as Robert Burns used to say, but if you look up on the internet, you are not likely to find such a words by Robert Burns. But we have come up through such things, and you should be ready for that if you want to translate books someday. Of course, we can do remarks in translation, but it's important for us, as for translators, as for the first readers, to um, indicate these allusions, to analyze them. It's not, of course, that dangerous for uh, the plot. It's dangerous for philosophy of the novel. And uh, the main thing is that if you missed, missed the citation as a translator, it hurts your self-esteem. But we are specialized on the translation of fantasy and science fiction. We would like to make an emphasis on that, on our challenges. 
So in the beginning, let's talk about science fiction and fantasy, the two uh, types of this uh, literature. Now, of course, we all know that science fiction is about robots and fantasy is about dragons. But what are the fundamental uh, differences? Science fiction, it builds the models of future based on the pers perspectives of uh, uh, modern uh, science, uh, the theories uh, which exist now. And based on uh, those theories, uh, authors think what can be done with it. Uh, the focus is uh, on the science and the social experiment, which also is, exists, uh, it is uh, focused on the scientific part. And if we're talking about fantasy, it's different. It is a mega genre uh, which uh, is producing impossible worlds uh, and building realities which are not possible in our world, but it is based on social and cultural uh, paradigms. So if uh, uh, put it simple, uh, in uh, science fiction uh, is focused on the science, in fan fantasy is focused on an individual. And those uh, two centers of the genres, they cause uh, the main challenges. So let's start from uh, science fiction. What is the main problem when you uh, translate uh, uh, science fiction? Science is actually the problem, especially for a linguist. After coming to this conference, we realize that among you, there are many translators who work with the technical text, and maybe for you it won't be a problem if uh, in the text uh, you will meet some uh, difficult scientific term. But uh, still, sometimes it uh, is a headache. And those terms may be divided into uh, three categories, real scientific terms. So it's science fiction, but anyway, it is based on realities and the terms may be uh, real. It is uh, the simplest uh, version. Uh, we should just uh, translate as uh, those terms would be translated in uh, a, any scientific article. You don't have to invent anything. You just fi need to find the term. Uh, but uh, uh, what is different about uh, science fiction is that there are quasi ter terms which are uh, the same for many uh, scientific fiction works. Uh, those terms have been already used and there is a term in the target uh, language uh, like Buster Laser and etc. Uh, usually we use uh, the term uh, that is well known uh, uh, only if there are some other stylistic uh, peculiarities and at some uh, point you don't want to translate uh, time machine as time machine because it would ruin some other stylistic peculiarities of the novel but usually uh, we use the general uh, glossary of uh, science fiction terminology and sometimes there are uh, technological realities which are specific for uh, this uh, author and for uh, his novels, for the world created in his novels. And here we use either transliteration or loan translation, uh, or uh, we may uh, invent uh, uh, a new term uh, to make it uh, um, cultural. I was just looking at those technological re realities which are specific for a world. We are working now on translation for, of Duna by uh, Herbert and one of the realities is uh, so one of uh, the important realities uh, is what we uh, called suspensor lights. You can't uh, transcribe uh, or transliterate it. Uh, so uh, because if we um, uh, just uh, trans uh, use transliteration, there will be different connotations. So we need to invent a term and uh, we uh, don't want uh, readers to laugh if the authors didn't uh, want them to laugh. So what should we do? We have only one life hack. Find an engineer or become an engineer yourself. You can find a person who can uh, have a look and say, no, we don't say it this way. It's not like this. This is what we can propose how to solve this uh, problem. Find a person 
uh, who does not uh, maybe know uh, space uh, terminology well, but at least uh, they understand basic uh, technical terms, which uh, may be a problem for a literary translator. And what is the, are the problems uh, uh, in uh, uh, translating a fantasy? It is a postmodern uh, term because it is based on interpretation of the cultural heritage. And the problem is that all realities of the world, they are taken from somewhere, place names, names, they are taken from uh, various cultural la layers. So what should we do? We need to understand them all and seize them all. So our a life hack is to move and live in a library. Let's uh, take, for example, Tolkien. And this is uh, not full list of the allusions which may be found in his, in his text. And the translator should see them all. Uh, it's Norse and Germanic mythology, Greek mythology, Christian mythology, uh, Magbet by Shakespeare, uh, because um, uh, there were things um, from uh, Shakespeare and you need to recognize them all because Tolkien is a linguist himself and he had to use this all context and the reader should fill them as well. Of course you can use uh, transcription uh, also. Uh, there are some other things which we can add uh, to this uh, list. This is just uh, what uh, uh, we could remember very quickly. Of course you can translate it very directly based on the uh, modern uh, translation uh, translation guidelines by transcription and transliterations but many uh, names they have some traditional uh, uh, translations which uh, used to be translated uh, uh, in this or that way and you need to mind all those aspects when we are talking about names and their translation uh, 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 example from Duna. One of the heroes uh, is uh, called in English Yuzu. The main hero Yuzu. We can use the same term in Ukrainian, but there is one problem. This is, word comes from Arabic. It not uh, just uh, comes from Arabic, it is taken from the vocabulary of uh, the Greek language. It means a foundation basis. And according uh, to the Arabic phonetics, it should uh, be usul. So translating, even if you are translating an English text, you should uh, remember what are the roots of the world word and uh, try while translating remember about uh, the language from which the term comes and now let's talk about poetry a little bit there are many reasons uh, which make a person write poetry or translate poetry uh, maybe uh, uh, some aspirations or, or and if you have this talent and you need to develop it if you don't want your poems to remain uh, in your table but you want to publish them what you should should you remember about of course poetry is inspiration and uh, uh, thoughts and feelings but translation of um, any poetry uh, is uh, comprised of theory and content. Theory is the things which any translator should know, uh, like rhyme, uh, poem, measures, uh, Italian, sonnet, uh, how it is different from Shakespeare, uh, sonnet. So uh, you should understand some very basic concepts. Uh, you really need it because uh, all the uh, poetry, uh, especially uh, in the contemporary uh, poetry, uh, is uh, also the uh, structure. And uh, uh, the structure is a theory, as I put it he uh, this here, and the content, of course. This is also a question uh, which um, was discussed by uh, theorists and translators because uh, there are uh, two uh, components uh, uh, like um, literal uh, translation, uh, even losing some figurality. This is the tradition which uh, is uh, pro the key trend now when translators uh, um, make uh, word for word mostly translation. 
And uh, the question is that we need uh, to convey all uh, thoughts and words of the author. Uh, and uh, if we have uh, uh, a poem or not a poem as a result uh, it's not important and another trend is uh, conveying feelings and emotions and the form the structure I mean and only then words you can replace uh, uh, some images there is a, a problem when we translate from Ukrainian into uh, uh, French we have uh, some a great words in Ukrainian which cannot be translated into French because they will sound really um, weirdly and this is why uh, the poem actually was uh, written this way uh, the translator has be to be creative but in fact any uh, translator has to make the decision so the question here is will you join the smart or the handsome it's your choice and you should decide of course there should be harmony you should reflect both uh, content and the form but this is uh, the ideal and how you should improve your skills if you've got this talent what should you do with it of course first of all you should uh, know the theory all this versification aspects know uh, different types of science and why uh, one is different from the other and the second one is practicing you can play this is what I did when I learned to translate poems and I don't say that this is uh, uh, my uh, own methodology. Maybe other people use uh, this uh, techniques, but I discovered this method. And what I discovered for myself, I just played. Uh, you can take a colleague, you can find um, or select an epoch, you can maybe uh, s select uh, some pieces of paper with the uh, written epochs, uh, like Renaissance and Sonnet, and you can also select a topic and you try to write a sonnet from uh, the selected epoch so we uh, try uh, to reflect uh, the uh, author and so okay we are running out of time okay so we are practicing um, Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what are Ukrainian uh, um, editorial houses are interested in? Uh, but you should understand what their areas of interest are. We worked uh, with the Family Book Club and the Bogdan uh, Ed editorial house about all others we just know what the areas of interest are uh, family book cl club are world bestsellers detectives uh, uh, women no novels and now also science fiction uh, they want to translate the books uh, which are really uh, new and uh, um, they want to uh, public uh, very fresh books uh, as for uh, Bogdan uh, they publish uh, books for children and youth from classical uh, books to uh, science fiction. Zhupansky uh, Editorial House uh, is uh, the works of uh, famous world authors and they've got a series of Nobel Prize winners. Uh, they want to familiarize Ukrainian uh, culture with those people and also there is an area of literature for children and youth. Ababa Lalamaka um, and Vivat. So in two words, uh, if you translate a poem, what should you do with it? It is best to, to uh, take part in various uh, poetry competitions uh, for students. There is a wide choice for those who translate from French. There is a, a competition by the Embassy of Canada and Embassy of Belgium. Uh, the uh, competition um, of the Embassy of Belgium. The prize is really good. You can uh, win the internship in a famous uh, school. And one of the translators, by the way, won this competition. Uh, yeah, okay. And also uh, competitions in various universities. Uh, for example, in um, Har 
Karazin National uh, University uh, and East uh, Ukrainian uh, National University. And you can assess yourself and compare yourself to other translators because we all think that we are the best. But if you want to understand really uh, how good you are, you should uh, take part in competitions. And then you can uh, offer your works to uh, editorial houses. And if uh, you took part uh, in uh, certain competitions, you then can apply for certain grants because this is what brings money uh, to uh, translators and if you get a grant then you can publish what you like the main thing is that you interests are the same interests of the embassy because otherwise it makes kind of a problem there are also competitions uh, for everybody not only students there are some age restrictions uh, so uh, there is metaphor literary award there is money a prize uh, also international Susanna Roth translation competition for young translators organized by Czech centers and the literary section of the Arts Institute uh, you need to translate uh, from Czech but the prize is really good you can get an internship abroad and also a rather specific uh, uh, competition international translation competition from uh, Zavolna Svashe Nasha Foundation and Polish uh, Book Institute um, and there was a uh, 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 poetry by Wyslava Szymborska should be translated in Ukrainian, uh, Belarusian, and Russian. Uh, so thank you for your attention. Katarina and Anatoly, you are so wonderful. It was a pleasure to listen to you and uh, to look. Uh, do we have time for questions? Uh, one question, maybe, uh, just a small question. Uh, we are out of time, unfortunately. We, ha we do have a question, maybe we can answer it. Just one. Could you tell uh, what do you think about uh, dialects and specific local uh, words? Uh, the uh, translations uh, by Perbidi that you uh, said mentioned, uh, they are great, but he uh, uses very specific Western Ukrainian uh, dialectic words. Uh, they are great, but they are not acceptable for everybody. Uh, and people are not, uh, uh, ex do not accept uh, uh, this kind of language. And about the phonetic aspect in Ukrainian, there is a rule if we translate, uh, if we transliterate uh, proper names we have uh, uh, certain cases when we should use uh, uh, two of similar uh, Ukrainian uh, letters uh, should we uh, meet the rules or in uh, uh, literary translation uh, we can keep closer uh, to the original like uh, Hemingway or Hemingway uh, can we start from the second question? There are things uh, which we like and there are rules. And we can say that we uh, like, for example, Hemingway. But if there are rules which say it should be Hemingway, you should comply with those rules. If it is not acceptable from the point of view of literature, probably we'll have a discussion, by the way, with our uh, publishers, because there are many uh, words which come from Arabic, and gh is a very big difference there. Uh, so uh, every time you should remember about these aspects. Now our language uh, is... Uh, there is kind of a conflict uh, between norms and harmony. So currently it is a difficult question. Among our colleagues, there are people who say that we use H or G uh, because this is the rule. Um, so we try uh, to find the harmony because we need to solve this question in some way. Uh, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, time. You can ask questions later.